this account is very useful for a world history context. It was by an American named John Ledger, who was born in 1751 and so lived through the era of American War of Independence. He travels with Captain Cook on his Pacific voyages and travels along the North American coast and then up into Alaska and actually over to Siberia. So he encounters several different cultures, the, the Pacific Islands cultures, the Native Americans of the Northwest, and the indigenous people as well as Russians along the Pacific coast. So you have an American, although he's born of British subjects, but becomes an American citizen after independence, who is encountering these multiple different cultures. Historians have discovered, and much of it is not very reliable. He actually borrowed heavily from an earlier account of Captain Cook's voyage and added much of those anecdotes and incidents to his own account. But it has the sense of discovery that he really is going out and encountering these cultures for the first time. He dates this, so it looks like a journal. On the 7th of March, we fell in with the coast of America in latitude 45 degrees north, long 233 east, a little below Cape Blanco, and tracing it northerly until the 28th, we entered an inland in 49 degrees north. From the 7th to the 28th, we had the ruggedest weather we had yet experienced. The weather was cold, the gales of wind were successive and strong, and sometimes very violent. Our ships complained. We were short of water and had an unknown coast to explore. And the very day we purposed to reconnoiter for our harbor, the wind veered to the northeast and forced us off the coast a full week. It was a matter of doubt with many of us whether we should find any inhabitants here, but we had scarcely entered the inlet before we saw that hardy, that intrepid, that glorious creature, man, approaching us from shore. As we advanced into the inlet, we found it still more favorable and perceived several small islands between the two shores. Night approaching, we came to an anchor between one of those islands and the eastern shore, about one quarter of a mile from each. In the evening, we were visited by several canoes full of the natives. They came abreast our ship within two rods of us and there stayed the whole night. Without offering to approach nearer or to withdraw farther from us, neither would they converse with us. At the approach of day, they departed in the same reserve and silence. This is a classic account. It starts out very specific, down to the latitude and the longitude, although a footnote on this edition says an obvious error, which is characteristic. And talking in detail about the environment, what was going on with the weather and then the geography of this harbor. And you get the sense in this account of the actual experience of coming into this harbor and not really knowing what was going to happen, not knowing what they were going to see. And then this mentality of the sailors. We weren't sure if we were going to see anybody. We really wanted to see people. We were a little afraid of them. And then this very mysterious sentence that he has at the end about being visited by several canoes full of the natives who come close to the ship but then don't say anything, they don't know if they're friendly or not, and then they depart in the same reserve in silence. This is a frequent model in travel accounts, what our first encounter with the other is. Here's the crucial moment when they first see what they've been looking for all this time, which is the people of North America. It's somewhat exaggerated when he talks about that hardy, that intrepid, that glorious creature, man approaching us from shore. Here is where you have to think, is this really what they were thinking at the time? May have been, may not have been, but certainly it's something that in this narrative is powerful. Whoever annotated this said that this is not really the right place. As he was recreating the story, once he got back, he was putting in details to make it seem like it was very accurate, but not always getting them correct. The issue here is whether there's any account from the other side. What was their response to the coming of Europeans? For this purpose, all we have is this account, and so we get some sense of what the European sailors were thinking don't have any sense of what the other is, except in this behavior of coming out to see who they are and then going away. I think it's very illustrative of that dynamic.